What is up everyone? Welcome back to another video of Ant Will Plays. Today we're playing Choices Across the Void. This has to be my favorite I have to be well, favorite one. We already have a love interest that I'm going for, because you already know who the woman is. And in the last issue we had to get our siblings off the ship because of I don't know why. But, anyway, I have some issues with this, so I had to repeat both chapters, because there are some things I wanted to fix, so there, and I finally fixed it. So, now we can move on with the rest. Hope we don't get the wrong, th say the wrong thing, because I don't want to say the wrong thing. Anyway, let's begin. When your passengers come to, with, come to you with problems, can your siblings help you solve them? Uh, maybe. Across the void. Oh. Meet the passengers. Now playing as Pax. Okay. You race down the corridor after your brother and the ship's navigator who are heading toward the toward the passenger lounge. You wait. Great. I don't have time for this, Pax. We can talk about your opinions after I well the passenger dispute. In the meantime, maybe you could start getting your things together. Holmes turns to you with a shocked expression. No, don't pack yet. Let's do the opinion where Pax stays on the axle. Thanks for your input, Holmes, but this is between me and my, me and Pax. Please let me say anything. I'll be the best engineer you've ever had. And Eos and I have a chance to fix things. If you kick us off now, we might not ever get another shot. My expressions softens. Tell you what, help me calm down the passengers and I'll think about it. Passenger relations, me? Can't hurt to try something new. Whatever you need me to do, I'll do it. I can prove I belong on, on the Atlas. Thanks, Pax. See, I knew we could figure it out. Your group arrives at the set of doors. Anthony gives you a gives you a you and Holmes a big smile. God. God. This is me. I'm supposed to be playing me. All right. Straighten up those uniforms. It's time to meet our passengers. Oh, one I really The doors open into the passenger lounge to your right, a divin a divine and two dynamas are arguing. Divine and Di dynamas are arguing their voices drawing a crowd. Oh no, they're still going. You look over at the angry trio, other passengers eye them discordantly. Ugh the entire purpose of our trip is to attend the peace talks. They're historic. Like, how can you be so dismissive of them? I'm going to the capital for my yearly shopping extravaganza. Anyone who wastes their time with the peace talks risk looking like an, an idealistic fool. Including you, Octan. Oct- Oh. Mirop, listen to me. The Jura and Vanguard can live together in harmony. We both have established governments. Don't we owe it to our neighbors to hear them out? Neighbors? They've certainly shown their neighborly love by murdering and terrorizing us. The crowd gasps for the first time. The younger Dynamas steps forward. Mother, how can you say that? 
The Jura have a right to fight for themselves. Please, Rana, this rebellious phase needs to end. Your support of the Jura will fade, just like your desire to get an authentic Lectra tattoo. That's not true. I still want that tattoo, and the Jura are suffering. You look back at Anthony and Holmes. You'll solve this diplomacy. Go over there, introduce yourself, and tell them they need to solve this elsewhere. Show authority. Good plan. This will be my first captain it, captainly decree. Please let, tell me we go back to being us. V twirls just above Anthony's shoulder. You could always give them a gift certificate to the shopping district. V, I know you think clothes can solve most problems, but this isn't one of them. Just go and talk to them. You got this, Anthony. He squeezes through. I, I, I can't do this. Squeezes through the gatherings onlookers to reach the passengers. You trail closely behind, losing homes in the crowd. Hello there, passengers. I'm Captain Ilara. Captain Anthony Ilara. Do you think we could solve this little misunderstanding privately? The three passengers ignore Anthony and continue arguing. The Jura and Vanguard have been fighting for years. They've tried to talk it out before to before to no avail. What makes you think... Oh, I must have skipped something. Because like you, you, I was once blind to the injustices of the galaxy, but the Jura have opened my eyes. They've opened mine too. Oh, Rana, you're too young to understand. You don't know anything about how much Vanguard have done for us. Seriously, lady? Parents, listen to your kids sometimes. I'm serious. You always say that, but I do understand, and I care more about it than you. Tears well up in Rana's eyes, and she runs out, the d out into the corridor. Rana! Oh my. Anthony stares at the dying his mother in shock. Don't just stand there. Do something. Go after her. Your brother turns your brother turns to you with pleading eyes. Pax, help. Uh, I'm on it. You worry about them. Uh, you worry about them. I'll find you the daughter. Anthony shoots you a thankful look before turning back to the crowd. Now I think we can work this out. You t you tear off tear, you tear off after run you tear off after Rana following her into the corridor. Oh uh, wait, I think I know where this is going. We're gonna play as play the play the Alaris the Alara siblings. Eos, Pax, and me. Or I'm gonna be playing my, as apparently my brother in this story, and now we're playing as my sister. I get it. And they're going to have love interests too, right? Yep. I have a feeling. Hey, wait up. I just want to talk. You dodge crew members and and obviously obvious passengers as you struggle to keep up. No, leave me alone. Ron disappears behind the a door just seconds ahead of you. You pump your legs faster and burst into the escape pod bay. This area is dangerous, Rana. Rana ignores you and darts into one of the escape pods. Get, I'm getting out of here. Rana slams her hand down on the button and the doors begin to close. You racially slide into the escape pod behind her. What do you think you're doing? Get out. The escape pods doors close behind you, trapping you both uh, as the vessel zooms into space. What were you thinking? You realize we were right next to an occupied war zone, right? 
Do you even stop to consider the void? Rana scoffs, flipping a lock of jeweled hair over her shoulder. The void? Please. No one has seen them in a hundred years. Wait, the void? Are they alien race? In hundreds of years. They're just a spooky... They're just a spooky story parents use to make their kids go to bed on time. That's not exactly true. And how were you planning to get back? Can you even fly an escape pod? No. That's what I thought. Luckily you have me. Ace flying skills run in my family. You sit down at the controls, run a paces behind you, staring through the viewport into the vast space beyond. Do you want to talk about it? Things seem pretty intense back there. Are you okay? It's been a long time since anyone asked. Rana wipes a stray, of, a stray tear from the corner of her eye. What does that mean? Just that no one cares about what I think or how I feel. I can relate. It's just... I get really passionate about the war. Yeah, me too. I don't want my character to be... I don't want my character to be like a jerk to his siblings, so that's why I'm going with a nice route. Okay, luckily I have my boyfriend. He's like in this really cool band raising awareness for the Jara's plight and everything. He's so brave. There are bands for that? Yeah, they call themselves Righteous Re Rectitude. He's really, he's really opened my eyes to the injustices in this galaxy. You know, when he finally gets his album released, we're going to run away and join the Jura's war effort together. But my mom doesn't understand. Yeah, that's rough. As Rana talks, you carefully pilot the escape pod back to the Atlas. If my mom would just listen to my boyfriend's songs, I think she'd really actually get it. Rana, I think you have to stand up for your beliefs. You can't back down. Even if it's hard for others to hear, if they love you, they shouldn't ask for to compromise your beliefs. That's exactly how I feel. The Atlas slowly expands in the viewport as you glide closer. Do you think family is the most important thing, though? This is a big galaxy. At the end of the day, your mom is all you've got. My brother and I don't agree about the Civil War either, and we didn't see each other for a while because of it. I don't want it to be, it to always be like that. The war is really tearing us apart. That's one of my boyfriend's songs. It's called, This War is Tearing Us Apart. Wow. Something... You can name a song out of just something random. Sounds like a classy, a classic. You bring the escape pod safely into the bay. Wow, you really can pilot this thing. This is those square Rubik's cube look-alike things are things are escape pods. I didn't know you can pilot escape pods. I don't know. I'm good with machines, and every machine has a trick. You help Rana up and out of the pod's doors. Are you ready to see your mom? Yeah, I'm ready. I think I'm going to start by asking her to listen to, m to the song I told you about. Whatever works. You lead Rana back to the passenger lounge where Anthony is trying to placate Metro. We're back. Rana, thank the stars you're in one piece. Rana runs up and hugs her mother, a smile on her face. Never do that again. For crying out loud, mother, it wasn't that serious. I'm so glad you're safe. Oh, this is just precious. Pre precious. As mother and daughter embrace, 
You wave your arm in their direction and grin at Anthony. I can't believe I did that. I can. Come on. Anthony gestures to the other side of the lounge. You leave the passengers to their reunion and follow him over. Don't let the praise go straight to your head. But you did but you did good today, Pax. It wasn't easy. She stole she stole one of the one of your escape pods. Really? Maybe we should look into putting some extra security measures in place. Passengers shouldn't be able to take off like that. Definitely a safety hazard. What did you say to her? I thought you have have to drag her back kicking and screaming. Oh, you know, the usual. I think she'll be okay. I'm impressed, Peck. I'm kind of impressed, Pax. Ow, my arm. Today you showed me you can put your views aside for the good, for the good, for the good of the crew. The Pax I know would have told, would have told that Dynama's mother, or where she could stick it. I thought about it, but you didn't. That's what's important. I want you to stay on the atlas. Really? Thanks, Amy. You won't regret this. I can't wait to my hands on the equipment. I'm going to make this ship run smoother than, than a hydro camper with fresh oil. I see you still have s the same priorities. Someone's got to keep this ship running for you. There's no one better f for the job. You throw your arms around, around Anthony in a warm embrace. This is adorable. Hugs for everyone. Your brother squeezes you tightly before before stepping back. I'd like to get acquainted with that swinking engineering room you've got. I think I spotted a geospectral astroscope somewhere in there. Wait, what? See you, bro. You leave Anthony to his passengers and return to the engineering room. Wow. Huh. This is the engineering room? The moment you step into the engineering room, you stop You stop to marvel at the state-of-the-art equipment. Wow. Before you can lose yourself, the machiner in the, machi in the machinery ring, Holmes walks in. Hi there, Pax. Hi, Pax, right? That's me. He grins widely at you. I'm Holmes, in case you didn't catch it earlier. It's good to officially meet you, Holmes. You know, outside of crisis. Outside of crisis? I know. I can't believe how you went after that passenger today. You're like a hero. You're a hero. I wouldn't say that. I was just helping out, Anthony. No, you were fearless. You even jumped in even though she had in she ejected in an escape pod without without any training. It could have easily blown you into pieces. You could have killed yourselves. How did you know about it? I could have died? You're joking, right? Oh, I never kid when it comes to tech. These pods have safety protocols for a reason, and you didn't activate any of them. The other day, someone forgot to change the engine coolant, and it blew right, right up during testing. Luckily, no one was piling it. I definitely wasn't thinking about that when I, when I got into the, when I got in the thing. Only real heroes jump into danger without thinking about it. Yep, that's what All Might did. I'm just saying. Holmes sits on a nearby railing and swings his legs back and forth. You get to see all sorts of things here on the Atlas. Working behind the scenes gives you a totally different different perspective on what's go what goes on with the passengers. I know this place place like the back of my hand. Oh really? Sounds like we'd make good friends. I'm glad there's someone else on this ship who knows there's 
who knows their stuff. I can't explain to you how old it gets, explaining what what a deflection damper is. Oh, I love those. We actually have one here in this room. Almost looks around the space with adora adoration. It took me a while to figure out all the little quirks of the machinery in here. If you want someone to show you around the engineering room, I'd love to. Not to mention, you have incredibly curly hair. What? I mean, you're really pretty. That's nice of you to say. So, tour time? No. Thanks, but I'd like to figure things out on my own. Maybe we can hang out some other time. No worries. I'm just a buzz anyway. Buzz away if you need anything. Holmes leaves you to your first day as en chief engineer. And you begin to acquaint yourself with your n new engineering room. Okay, finally. Finally, I get to play as me. Now playing as Anthony. You're about to leave the pasture lounge when V lets out an urgent beep. Anthony, our pastures are at 3 o'clock. Maybe they're just coming over to say hi. Two passengers hurry over to you. What are you? Are you a bird lady? Hello, darling. Do you have a moment? We have an emergency. Oh, what are you? We've been looking for an Atlas employee everywhere. You should have better service. Oh, would you look at that? Outfit, Leona. He must be the captain. That's right. I'm Captain Alara. Glad to have a captain with some fashion sense. The last one was was always walking around with rags and in rags. It was very unfortunate, wasn't it, Alara? You notice for the first time a small creature sitting on Leona's lap. Oh, I see. Ruben's caught your. I see Warren's caught your eye, as he well should. He's all. He's our pride and joy. And he's just been absolutely devastated since takeoff. Watching that girl abandon her mother didn't help. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh my stars! Oh my stars and garters! <laughs> I was on the edge of my seat. I thought my wings, wings might lift me out, out into the cosmos. Your wings are your ears, right? Calm your feathers, Adara. That was nothing compared to the, mon the monstrosities of s on Cell. Yes, yes. I know Cell is, terif is a terrifying and dark place. Now focus on Warren. He needs us. Right. Warren is incredibly empathic, real eager to please. You can see see the ordeal Neil has really gotten to him. He's distressed. I can fix this. Finally, someone who gives. <laughs> that's what I. That's what we do on the Atlas. We won't find a more helpful ship in the galaxy. Oh, thank the stars. I just can never be happy when my poor baby is suffering so. What would you like me to do for Warren? Hope it's not too many things. We just want Warren back to normal. This is supposed to be a luxurious experience. Well, I don't feel very luxurious. And to think, this, this on top of, of the war looming right outside at these very walls. You perfectly, you're perfectly safe aboard the Atlas. Nothing is looming outside these walls. I don't care what's looming or not looming. Fix it. Before you can say another word, the passenger's t Titania appears. Yay! Would it be alright if I pet him? 
you watch in astonishment as ta as Titania coos over Warren and scratches under his chin. Warren perks up, rubbing his nose against Titania's hands. Oh! I thought the mouth was under his chin. Or that was his mouth. Oh. He's quite taken to you with you, dear. Who are you and what have you done with my pilot? Titania looks offended. I hate a lot. I hate, I hate a lot of things, but not animals. Titania takes your hand and brings it close to Warren's face. Just be gentle. Let him get to know you first. You reach out and let Warren sniff your fingers. He cautiously leans out his neck and sniffs your palm. Warren looks away, unimpressed. Oh no, it's worse than I thought. He doesn't even care. He's never acted like this before. Something must be wrong. The two passengers gush over Warren, sliding their hand across his simple pink skin. He doesn't seem to like you very much, Captain. Don't take it personally. It comes with the territory of working on, on an animal-friendly ship. They'll let animals on this ship. And I'm not going to say what kinds of animals, because it's aliens. What nonsense. Warren likes everything. Likes everyone. See? He's devastated. He's lashing out due to extreme stress. Usually, Warren is much perkier, but he had a trying day. Well, the Atlas has a pet spa for, the, for this sort of situation. That sounds acceptable. Are are there passen are there massages, deep soaks, manicures? Only the best. The, this place sounds like a dream. You could take Warren there. He'd probably have the time of his life. I could join you too. What do you think, Captain? Please join me. <coughs> This is your first chance to earn points with your passengers. You can unlock special scenes to keep them happy throughout your journey. Get to know Titania. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> I know. <laughs> that sounds perfect. Titania scoops Warren up, up from Leona's lap with practice ease. We'll take care. We'll take good care of him. He'll be back in your arms by afternoon tea. Don't worry. Oh, thank you, dear. Just thank you. If he's not happier next time, I s next time I see him, I'm filing a complaint. We'll do a we'll do our best. Wow. Is that lady in a Dalek chair? If you guys don't know what a Dalek is, if if you have you watched Doctor Who? Titania leads the way to the pet spa with Warren in her arms. Wow. I see pets. Weird, weird pets. You enter the pet spa with Titania and Warren. All around you, adorable creatures are enjoying the best pampering the Atlas has to offer. I've never seen anything like this before. It's my favorite room on the Atlas, and it'll probably be Warren's after this. T Titania smiles down at Warren and tickles his chin. I never would have guessed you were such a softy around small creatures. It's hard not to be. Titania looks away, deeply trying to f deflect the focus away from her. What about you? Don't you like animals? <laughs> Do I like pets? I love them. They're so cute and compassion and companionship is important. I always wanted a pet for myself, but it wasn't in the stars for me. Maybe that will change someday. I wish Artemis Enterprises will allow crew, allow crew, 
allow a crew to keep their own pets, morale would be higher. They don't. They don't? Having our own pets running around mingling with the fancy pets of the passengers, it's highly discouraged. Maybe I can talk to Artemis about that. Don't worry about it. I'd hate to put you in a difficult situation when you just started this job. You wouldn't... You wouldn't be? When the time's right, I think I'd adopt a snarf fip. My older sister had one that followed her everywhere when we were kids. But that... That's not important. Titania visibly shakes her memory off and looks around the spa. Let's focus on Warren. What's first? A bath? You walk over... We're rolling over the tone or over to one of the empty baths on the far side of the room. Detanya tests the water before filling the tub. Giving a pet a bath, it's almost relaxing. Depends on the pet. True, they're not all fans of water. The spark puff, for instance. Well, that's just asking for it. For trouble. You lower Roran into the tub of warm water, and Titania rinses him with a with the loose with the hose. She then hands you a bottle of shampoo. You you startle and drop the shampoo into the tub, where it spins around by Warren's feet. Oh no, sorry, Warren. What? Hope you're not. This careless with your day job, Captain. I have... I'll have you know, pet pampering isn't in my job description. Desania picks up the bow and begins to lather Warren herself. Okay, Warren, almost done. You rinse Warren off before placing him on, drying, on a drying table where a mechanical arm sweeps a gust of air over Warren's body. Almost instantly, worn is dry. All set. What's left? Let's see. Let's a makeover. You and Titania sell Warren on one of the on one of the grooming tables in the corridor of the room. This is my favorite part. I mean, for Warren. Right. Well, how do you want to do this? We have time for either a manicure or skin treatment. You need some moisturizer. Couldn't agree more. The machine arm arm keeps Warren occupied with a clean with a shiny object. As you work my work the moisturizer into his silky skin. When all the lotion has been appealed, you step back to admire your handiwork. It doesn't look any different. You know what they say. The best makeover is the one you never you never notice. I've never heard of any heard anyone say that. Look, he's thrilled. I'm calling this a victory. All right, then I surrender. What now? All right, Warren, you've earned your massage. You place Warren on the tape on one of the pet spa's massage tables. You press your hands lightly against Warren's shoulders, carefully working out the knots once in his muscles. I think I'm doing it right. Mostly. Let me show you. He's going to take your hand and drags it, it along Warren's silk looking back gently gently corrects the pressures the pressure until Warren seems to smile that's more like it I think I learned something new today thanks to you don't mention it 
You continue to massage Boren until the, all the knots in his muscles are gone. Alright, what's next? I think that's everything, actually. Finally, a piece. Finally, a piece. A blissful. A blissful. Warren wor plops onto the fluffiest spa bed in sight. Thanks for helping me today, Titania. I did it for Warren. I still appreciate it. Well, those passengers were tearing you apart. I couldn't just watch. You reach out and grasp the tiny's hand. Her skin is smooth against yours. You give her fingers a gentle squeeze. I'm really glad I came here with you. Tiny's eyes widen in surprise. Oh. After a moment, Titania squeezes back. Me too. I'll look into the Atlas Pets Pets policy. See if we can make see if we can make it so the crew can keep their own pets. You're full of surprises. Maybe you're not destined to blow us into this into Stardust, Captain. I almost look forward to seeing how you'll run this ship. I hope I get to experience those fancy flying skills of yours I've heard so much about. But with any luck, you won't ever need to witness me at my best. Trying to pick Sporn up and this is on his pink face. For now, I'll get Sporn back to his to his mom's. Good luck. See you on the bridge. The tiny smiles and leaves with Vorin asleep and happy and happy in her arms. You watch her go, then head out to go find your brother. <sighs> now playing as Eos. You sit at one of the tables in the crew's mess hall, flipping through some reports on your data screen. As you reach for your drink, you see Anthony heading in your direction. Anthony, good to see you. Hi, Eos. He sits down at your table without another word. Sure, go ahead, take a seat. I always have to offer my little brother. I'm not just your little brother anymore. I'm also your captain. And I couldn't be more prouder of you. That's good to hear. Then I'll say it a little more often. You know, as Anthony take a deep breath. Listen, I came here to talk to you about something. I decided to let Pax stay on the Atlas. What? Why? She helped me out today. She was really professional in the face of, of a crisis. And she's an incredible engineer. Pax is staying? I'm happy for her. It's a little hard for me to believe... But if that's what really happened, she's grown a lot since Cyber. I think so too. So this is good news, right? The family's really back together? Really, the only thing is, I'm not sure I want both of you here. What? You'll take Pax who's been in jail more times than we can count, but you're showing me the door? Every time we're together, you two make my life miserable. All you do is argue about the Jura and Vanguard and who's right or and who's wrong. Maybe you're both wrong. Have you ever thought of that? I'm not wrong. Pax can't admit to herself that the Jura aren't just some underdogs. They're glorified murderers. Ah, you're doing it again. I can't just ignore the war, Anthony. I'm a vanguard, Marshal. Exactly. You'll never be able to put that aside, even for me. You're about to respond when the doors to the mess hall open and a beautiful divine enters the room. Okay. I knew it. I, f I knew it. I, I knew it. I knew it. I don't... Oh. 
Well, <laughs> uh, I think, are you sh are your are your passengers allowed back here? Dips around in his seat. You both watch as the Devine meanders around the table, starling the crew. Maybe she got lost. More passengers. How splendid. V, seriously. Your brother springs up and rushes over to the DV, to the divine. You slowly follow him off. Hi there. I'm Captain Alora. Can I help you? You in the right direction? Captain Alora. A pleasure. A pleasure. My name's Lyra. My name is Lyra. I have a unique problem I hope you'll help me solve. What kind of problem? I've experienced some thefts lately and need to avoid any further mishaps while on board your ship. I realize this might be an impos imposition, but I feel much safer with any, with any extra security you could spare. Lyra looks over at you and smiles. You feel heat rise next to your cheeks as your as your eyes meet. Marshal Alara It's not every day you you make the acquaintance of a of such a beautiful divine. Is that what they're called? I don't know. As Lara's eyes Lyra's eyes widen. Anthony looks between the two of you and a wicked smile spreads across his face. <laughs> you know, Marsha Laura, here's here was here was, you know, Marsha Laura here was just looking for some extra work he could help protect you. You want me to you want me on bodyguard duty? Sure, I've got some free time. Just like that? Come on, Nathan. Don't look so surprised. You know I you know I like to keep busy. Well, Marshal Laura, I appreciate your flexibility. Um perfect. Now, you and Pax have something to do other than harass me. So you decided your incredible or older brother can stay? My excellent Vanguard experience had nothing to do with it. In order to stay Eos, you'll treat this assignment as seriously as anything else, with just as much professionalism. You know, wouldn't it be better if my character was the older if my character was the older brother and Eos was the younger brother would make more sense. Of course, I stayed. Consider it done, Captain. Marshal Lara's time is appreciated, but he can't account for what happens behind closed doors. Well, that's debatable. Lyra rolls her eyes. I'd like some security for my room, please. A system, perhaps. There's a security system. It's the, um, the marshals just got a new training on. It spans a whole ship and alerts its crew of any breaches immediately. That sounds perfect. What exactly would, would it look like? Let me pull up a schematic. Ah. Huh. That would definitely make me feel more secure, and perhaps we could discuss our arrangement while you install the device, Marshal Lara. I'd like to get to know my bodyguard on, on a more personal level. Um, per personal? Okay. Here's your chance to upgrade the Atlas. This security system will help you in any battles to come and unlock an exclusive scene between Eos and Lyra. Okay. We can upgrade the ship's security system, okay. I 
I'd be happy to. Perfect. Where, where will we need to install all it? The control room. You shouldn't run into any problems setting it up there. With a smile, you, le you, head, you lead Lor Lyra out of the mess hall and to the Atlas control room. Uh, excuse me again. You enter the Atlas control room with Lyra all around the room, pulses with electricity working hard to power the entire entirety of the Atlas. Oh, impressive, isn't it? It looks quite complicated. I'm sure the system f for a ship like this is very complex. Yeah, I'm with you on that. Don't know much about tech, but I do know Vanguard security. And you boot up one of the monitors and begin to key in the security codes. Lara appears around the, in the shimmering displays. The flowers and vines along her her body vibrate with the energy in the, in the room. I never met someone from Divine, Divine before. Is there something you'd like to ask me, Marshal Alara? There is. Are all divine as beautiful as you? For a moment, Lara looks like she might not respond. Not if they've been left in the shade. Shade or sun? I have a hard time believing when they measure up to you. Maybe you should visit my planet sometime, then decide for yourself. I'd be hap I'd be happy to. It'd be rude to turn down an invitation like that. Lara smiles wry wryly. I wouldn't say it was an invitation. I'll do my best to earn Earn one then. You finish setting up the security system and call Lyra over to look at it with you. So, you'll have a monitor like this, like this one in your room, for the sake of time. I'd rather show you how to work it now. Is that all you're going to show me? There might be some time for an extra lesson later or two. Lesson or two later. Lyra tries to hide her smile as you both return your attention to the schematic. Okay, what is that? The whole Atlas is now outfitted with special security shields. Alarms will sound if something ever goes wrong. That is reassuring. Anytime you want to to come or go, you just need to type in this code here. So we have shields for our ship. Nice. Lyra leans closer to you as you point out the correct function of the security system. You move your body closer to Lyra's so that your arms are touching. Arms are just touching. She glances at you and smiles. Careful, Marshal Lara. Wouldn't want to stain your uniform on my flowers. I think it. I think it looks better worn in. You pull one last future up on the monitor. Last but not least, if you ever need need me you're programmed directly into my data screen i'm just one tap away don't be afraid to use it i won't you'll find you'll find i'm not afraid of much i can't believe i can believe that having shown lyra the extent of the new security system you escort her out and back to the halls into the halls i think 
As you exit the control room, you notice her glance over her shoulder. She wrings her hands and heaves a sigh. Don't worry, Lyra. The thefts won't it will die down now that you're on the Atlas. I wish I could share your confidence. I actually feel like more of a target here than I than I did on my last ship. It's hard to imagine anyone dealing with theft the here. You've all got such glamorous lives on at the Atlas. At the and the Atlas wants for nothing. On a ship like this, theft seems like a problem only royalty would have. Lara's eyes widen and she comes to a sudden halt in the hall. Oh you're not you're not far off, Marshal Lara. You're speaking with the with the Empress of Divine. Divine. I'm sorry, what? Let me guess, we're ending it right here. Initiate status report. Allegiance neutral. Atlas, good condition. Moderate moral. Crew, moderate moral. Passengers, cheerful. Oh, how nice. Uh, well, I guess that's it for today's chapter. I'll s probably see you next week with this video anyway i hope you guys enjoyed the video make sure you guys see this video a thumbs up subscribe if you're new to my channel share this with your friends comment below what you think of the video and if you want to get notified of all the videos i put up on my channel just hit the notification button next to the subscribe button and i will see you all in the next video